Now that we have understood how to represent the signal graphically and analytically, we will see how are signals classified. <coughs> the first and the most important classification is the continuous time and discrete time classification. We can divide the signals into two different classes. The first class is continuous time class and the second class is discrete time. So, what is the difference between a signal which is continuous in time and what is discrete in time? Okay. If a signal is continuous in time, we will simply say that the variable t, the independent variable, takes a value which is from a continuum, which means if I plot the signal like this and then say what is the value of time, what all possible values that time t can take, it, it can take any possible value from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, let us say, uh, <coughs> let us take this interval 1 to 2. Now, how many different time values are existing in this? There are infinitely many values, right? So, if I say t is equal to 1, I observe the signal at t is equal to 1. Let us say x of 1 is the value of the signal at t is equal to 1. In this case, it is minus 2. Now, what is the next point? Can I ask what is the next point after t is equal to 1? If it is a continuous time signal, we cannot really answer this question because what is next after 1 is something very difficult to answer because it is a continuous time. So, is 1.1 next to 1 or 1.001 or 1.0001 or 1. several zeros and then 1? We do not know. There is always a number which is really, really small. So, it is impossible to say what is the next time instant when it is a continuous time signal because there is a continuum of time that is present between 1 and 2. So, there is no way of saying after 1, my next time instant is this. We can never say this. That is the main important property of a continuous time signal. So, any signal that you are observing in an oscilloscope, let us say you have a circuit which is connected to a battery and some resistors and capacitors and then you plug in the uh, uh, probe at a particular point across let us say resistor and then observe what happens to the voltage level as a function of time in the oscilloscope. What are we observing? We are observing it in a continuum of time. So, it is a continuous time signal. So, in all these circuits that we were seeing earlier, these capacitors, this microphone, all these circuits, if you take a probe and observe the output here in an oscilloscope, you will be seeing a continuous time signal. What is a discrete time signal? A discrete time signal is that where the time variable takes only discrete values. So, what does this mean? So, it means that if I say I know the signal x at some time t is equal to 1 and then I will say that this is equal to minus 2, I can clearly tell what is going to be the next time instant for a discrete time. I can say that at next instant, see if in this example, this is x of 1. I can clearly measure or I can clearly say that by just by looking at it, this is the next sample. So, the notion of nextness is present in a discrete time whereas it is not present in the continuous time. I know what is my current sample, I know what is my next sample. Whereas in continuous time, there is no way of saying what is next. So, how do we get a discrete time? What is an example of a discrete time signal? Any signal that you sample. So, what is sampling? If you go back to your electronic system thinking course, it was discussed at that time about time quantization, getting samples and all those things. So, recall the discussion that was present in that lecture. You will know about getting discrete time signals from continuous time signals. Basically, given at a continuous time signal, you sample it. And once you sample it, how do you sample it? You sample it at some interval. And once you sample it, what do you get is a discrete time signal. So, you get sequence of numbers. So, in this what you have is you have this first number, after that you have a second number, after that you have a third number and so on. Okay. So, you have a sequence here, whereas you do not get a sequence here. You get a continuum, you continuously get just numbers. So, given any small interval, just take the small interval. How many points exist in between this interval? Infinitely many. Divide that interval into half, how many points exist in that? Again, infinitely many. Whereas, if I just take this interval here, I know exactly 5 points exist, which we cannot tell in the continuous time. 
So these are the main differences between a continuous time and a discrete time signal. Given an interval for continuous time signal, there are infinitely many points. But given two time instances, you can exactly say how many points exist within those two time instances for a discrete time. Okay? And because of this reason, we can always say that it, this is a sequence of numbers. Because it is a sequence of numbers, we will denote that as a sequence itself instead of as a function. I will say my discrete time signal is x of 1, x of 2, x of 3 and so on. Okay. Whereas a continuous time is represented as, as a function x of t. So denote uh, the note the difference between the notation here and here. So if you have this curly braces here, it is typically used to denote a continuous time signal. And if you have a square brace here, that is typically used to denote a discrete time signal. Okay. So here we can plug in arbitrarily any values. I can say t is equal to one second. I can say what is the value of the signal at t is equal to 1.5 seconds at 1.00001 second. I can say what is the value of signal at 1 billion seconds. Whereas here we can only tell what is the value of the signal at time instant 1, time instant 2, time instant 3 and so on. Okay. So note that in both these cases we are not constraining anything on the amplitude, we are constraining only on the independent variable, not on the dependent variable. So the independent variable is discretized, not the dependent variable. So the amplitude can be anything, it can still be a continuum. Now, is it possible to get a discrete time signal from a continuous time signal? Yes, in fact that is what would have been discussed in this lecture, right? So you sample a continuous time signal, so just by sampling a continuous time signal, you take a continuous time signal and then you take the values of the signal at t is equal to 1, t is equal to 2, t is equal to 3 or t is equal to let us say 1.5, t is equal to 3, 3 is equal to 4.5 and so on. Essentially what you have done is you have taken the value of the signal at certain time instances that is you have sampled the signal at certain time instances. So by this process of sampling you have converted a continuous time signal which look like this sine wave. So the sine wave you observed at certain points, right? <coughs> By the sampling process, we have converted a continuous time into a discrete time signal. So this way we can get a discrete time signal from a continuous time signal. Is it possible to get a discrete time signal? Uh, is it possible to convert a discrete time signal to a continuous time signal? Yes, that is also possible. That is possible by what is called as the interpolating operation. So what is interpolation? It is basically nothing but just connecting dots. Okay? So in this graph, we have a discrete time signal. right? You have lot of dots. Each dot is nothing but, so the first dot is x of 1, the second dot is x of 2, the third dot is x of 3, just the sequence. Okay? Now just connect the dots. This connecting dots is called interpolation. Okay? You just wherever you do not know what the signal is. So in, in between in this region we do not know what the signal is because it is discrete. Now in order to convert this to a continuous time what we will do is we will just connect these two. By this connecting we have found out what would have been the value here. So this is the operation of interpolation and from this operation we can convert a discrete time signal to a continuous time signal. Okay. Now, we have already known about what is an analog signal, what is a digital signal that was also discussed in this lecture. We can go back and then you can check what was discussed, get some uh, refresh, uh, refresh uh, information about analog and digital from this lecture. So what is different between an analog signal and continuous time signal? What is the difference between a digital signal and a discrete time signal? Are they the same? Are they different? They are slightly different. An analog signal is basically nothing but a continuous time signal with continuous values. So if I say a signal is continuous time, it is automatically an analog signal. Okay? The amplitude and time both the dependent and the independent variable both take values from a continuum. Okay? Whereas if I say something is a digital signal, 
remember that digital signal is something where both the time and amplitude are quantized or both discretized so the value is also discretized and the independent variable is also discretized so it is discrete value discrete time so a discrete time signal is not necessarily a digital signal in order to get a digital signal from discrete time you have to quantize the amplitude okay what is quantization basically you discretize even the amplitude earlier we said that the amplitude can be from a continuum from a discrete time signal but for a digital signal the amplitude has to be discretized so that is the main difference between a digital signal and a discrete time signal all discrete time signals are not digital signals okay but all digital signals are discrete time signals okay but why do we need digital signals in the first place what is the main motivation to study discrete time signals the main motivation to study discrete time or digital signals is because these are the only kind of signals which can be processed by a computer why otherwise note that if i take a continuous time signal then there are infinitely many points between any interval not only that if i take one particular point let's say i discretize and take one particular point now where would this point lie in the amplitude from minus 2 to plus 2 once again it does it's a continuum of values infinitely many so we discretize both the time axis and the dependent y axis by doing this discretization or quantization we can know exactly there are finite number of values both time can take and the corresponding dependent variable will also take and that is why it is necessary to discretize the signal both in time and quantize to process that in a computer because computer cannot store infinitely many values we have finite amount of storage which means we are able to represent only finite number of points finite number of points both in time and both in amplitude so for this reason what we are going to do is we are going to digitize signals when we want to process and store them in a computer so typically this is done by digital circuits but there are also analog circuits the circuits that we saw here as an example earlier all these circuits these are all analog circuits there is no digitization here so this is directly processing a continuous time signal to another continuous time signal so there there are certain cases in which we don't want to digitize we can directly process using analog circuits in those cases we can just take directly the analog signals but what we cannot do with those analog signals is we cannot store them we cannot store them in a computer in your hard disk it is possible to store them in there are certain mediums like the magnetic tapes uh, if you are older some of you uh, 20 years back may have not even seen this but 20 years back there existed what are known as cassettes okay so it contained magnetic tapes in which audio signal was recorded so music songs used to be recorded and there used to be a cassette player or a, a tape recorder so you put the cassette in that basically it will wind the magnetic tape and from that magnetic tape the magnetic polarization is read by a magnetic head and the corresponding music is played so analog signal was stored like that in magnetic tapes or even in vinyl records so if you see there is a big disc in of vinyl over which music could be recorded and then it is played in a gramophone all those are all analog recording so what you can see the problem there is it, the size of the tapes and records are so big so whereas in, if you have a small micro sd card in that you can store millions of songs whereas you can store only one song in one vinyl record or in one uh, cassette so the problem with analog signal is storage is going to take huge amount of space so we do not use those analog computations or analog storage anymore we use digital simply because we can store in a very small area a large amount of information so in that way digital representation helps us a lot okay but in certain cases where you can process signals without even storing like for example in that uh, case that we saw here where we just remove the dc component we didn't want to do any kind of storage we just process it and then give the output so in this case we don't even have to do any kind of conversion you can just take the analog signal as such process it with an analog system as such and then feed out the output okay 
all right now how is the analog to digital conversion happening in computers it is through what is known as this analog to digital converter and then you have this digital processor which is basically your computer or a microcontroller and then some things are processed but eventually it is also converted back when you consume it so all real world signals are analog the audio signals that you produce that you hear eventually are all analog signals the video signals what we observe in real life it is all analog so all these voltage and current signals that is that is passing through a wire and the radiation that is coming out of your mobile phone everything is analog so what is happening in real life those are all analog signals but what we process inside a digital computer or microcontroller those are all discrete time signals discrete time discrete valued signals so in order to enable this conversion we have analog to digital converter at the input and after the processing we have a digital to analog converter again so this is the entire setup of how a continuous time signal is converted to a digital time and discrete valued or, or discrete time with digital values and then converted back to an analog signal again so this is the end to end setup so given this setup what we will see in this course is we will see only stick to only continuous time so first let's understand continuous time in later courses we'll study more about discrete time signals how to process discrete time signals and what are the properties of discrete time signals so let's in this course understand about continuous time signals so this will focus on signals which are continuous time and systems which process continuous time signals examples like i said take any circuit and then connect it to a voltage source or a current source have some components rc components inductors everything try to observe what is the voltage across it what is the current passing through the circuit these are all analog continuous time signals and each of the block in the circuit is an analog system so what we study in this course will be helpful to analyze such kind of signals and such kind of systems